He just fixed it back. He just fixed it back there, I think. There, yeah, that one. Okay, these critical positions will have an impact on how our government works. Governor, as you know, can veto. And a veto is a really bad thing or a very good thing. And, and as you saw last election, our, our governor vetoed some things and he also forced the legislation to go back and re-vote on or, or re-evaluate, particularly uh, related to abortion. So the governor has a huge amount of power, potential power. Uh, Lieutenant Governor picks the Senate Committee. I don't know if you know, I hope you all know this, that the Senate Committee, the, the head of the Senate Committee can basically determine who gets on the committees, who doesn't get on the committee, and if you put the wrong people on the committees, bills won't go through that you might want. So if you wanted something on immigration, and you had a, a chair that was against immigration, you'd probably never get out of the committee to be able to vote it on. So that's a very powerful position. Uh, Speaker of the House, also, same thing, committee members, he picks them. If he, want, if he wants to block something, it's easy to block. If he wants something to go through, it's easy to try and accelerate it through. Of course, that's to still be voted on at the other end, but if it never gets there, it won't be voted on. So very, very important. Uh, <clears throat> Attorney General, as we know, with the past Attorney General, he was going to take on the federal government on situations that's very important. We have a powerful person like that with that kind of ambition to, to take on who he needs to. Comptroller is a very important position because it counts all the financials and can have a big impact on money is spent and where it uh, goes. So we're saying these five positions will determine the direction of Texas in 2015. That's the major reason why we want to, this year, get people out in the primaries. All right. I think it must be Joanne has to touch it first. There you go. Good, thank you. What are we fighting against? We're fighting against existing candidates that believe in government corporate welfare, where we decide that we want to help this company along. And you look at the federal side, it might be where the solar industry tried to help. Or the, but in, in Texas, we have race cars and stuff that we'd like to kind of maybe help and be successful here. Uh, just pure spending. Our budget this year is 26% higher than the last year. Wow. And, we, and by the way, at the rain, 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 the rainy day fund to do that. Big government, big government of all types. It, it just gets bigger and bigger. The departments grow. They have multiple departments that do almost the same thing, overlapping. And special interest. They love these special interests where someone says, boy, I can help this builder and he's going to be good for me for my next election. So those are the kinds of things that we, we want to do. How do candidates win elections? Obviously, you get the most votes, right? That's, that's the key to any election, is that it's, it's basic science. The more people that vote for you, the more. You know. So they must meet more voters than the opponents. If, if, if you don't go door to door, which we'll talk about door to door being so important, if you don't go door to door, you can't win unless you're really, really rich and you have the TV commercials on three times a day, four days, every day of the week. They must go to door. This is not a matter for debate. And this is Joanne's statement. It is not a matter of debate on this one. You must go door to door. Going door to door is the most effective way to win votes. But the candidate can't go to every place. It just there's enough people, enough time for them to go to every door. So what do they do? They look for us to help them. That's our job. So we go to door to door as volunteers, and, the, and voter turnout of candidate supporters will determine the winner. Keep in mind that when in primaries, in primaries we generally, as volunteers, go out and help a a uh, a candidate. Where in the fall, we typically go and get the vote, people to vote, because we're, now it's our party we're trying to support versus a candidate. So in the, in the fall, when I go in the fall, I go door to door to get the vote out. I don't go for a candidate because we've already got them picked. But now, we go door to door for a specific candidate. So that, that distinguishes also the difference between the importance of votes. Well, look at that work the first time. So what we're going to do is, is look at how do we do that? Boots on the ground, door to door. Family. I'm going to talk about what, how family plays a part. It's most of the time positive. People to people. 20 neighbors. This is one of the things that, that I've heard people do and I've done successfully and I've seen others do it and we'll talk about that in a minute. Emails, Facebook, calling, direct mail, signs and advertising, TV and radio. How, what's the impact of those? We'll just go through those quickly. Individuals can have a huge impact by being active. Family. Make sure you and your family vote. So many families 
don't try and get together and talk about it. So obviously, this, in some families, there's a difference of opinion on either Democrat or Republican, never mind between party uh, individuals. But it's still good to have those conversations and discussions, and you can pick up. People to people. This is huge. Get 15 or 20 of your friends and neighbors and make sure that they understand what the issues are and what to work on and, and try and get them involved. That can, that can grow pretty quickly when you do that. Email. It's good. It's good to get the information out on your individual candidates. I have a distribution of around 500 people I send it to. I'm sure some of you are really excited to see my email sometimes. But generally right now it's focusing on what's going wrong and which candidates are the best ones to look at and why, and which ones seem to be making mistakes and why. So it's, it's again, email can be very effective, and if you use it, it, it will help a lot, and you need to work on that. Facebook. Uh, how many people have Facebook? See? Everybody, almost. <laughs> I have Facebook, believe it or not. I don't use it. My daughter put it on my thing, and I only time I go, I say, you got two pokes, and I go and look to see who the pokes are. But, uh, but I'm changing that because I found out, I went to a class that they put on at the university back a while, and I was amazed just how much Facebook can do and how, how much value it is to you. Facebook can allow us if we do the right, get the word out to large numbers, if everyone in this room posted stuff for their candidates, information for the candidates, information for the election, any of that kind of stuff, and get it on your Facebook. If your Facebook has only 20 members, there's 20 members that then someone else will pick up off that, and that could grow up to be 100 people very quickly. So Facebook's very powerful, and it's now time for those that are having candidates, it's now time to find out what you need to say for your candidate and get it out there. Find out from the people that are running the, the campaign, or I've told my people in my area, you tell me what, tell me you'll do Facebook and I'll, I'll send you the information to put on Facebook, save them a lot of trouble. And I'll make it short and sweet for them, of course. But So to me, that's a, a really important thing, and I'm trying to get my people, all the people, I say my people, in my precinct when I say that, I don't mean personal people. The people in my precinct, I try and get them to get involved in this side because it makes a big difference when you're trying to get someone elected. Telephone calling. We're going to do some, uh, James Perryman will do that later as a demo, but we're just talking about scripts will be provided, this is how we typically do scripts are provided, election information will be provided, and the demo, which I'm talking about, will follow. Direct mail, it's used a lot. I personally don't really like direct mail, but I, it must be effective because they do it and do it and do it, but I guess I got probably for each of the candidates running, I probably the local candidates are running. I got I probably got four or five for each one, of which I keep in a file just to keep track of what's going. On. Good information coming out. Don't get me wrong, but it kind of gets overwhelming to keep coming through the door. But I think it's compulsory to do it. So, uh, <clears throat> signs, highway signs, and signs on individual lines. Uh, it's like like the billboards when you go into Las Vegas and stuff. There's just so many you can't keep track of them. Uh, I know some of, the, some of the candidates are trying to be a little strategic and not put it with all the groups because it just you can't, when you're driving by, there's too many, you can't even see them part of it. But what's really important and, and valuable, I think mostly, is the lawn signs. Because that's now a neighbor putting a sign on saying, I'm supporting this person. They say, why are you supporting that person? They'll tell you why they're supporting that person. A lawn sign's important. We started to put them up in our community recently and we're getting, we're getting comments and actually we're getting other people say, well, I'll put one on. I said, well, we don't want the whole lawn done with here. We want I want to spread them around a bit. I think I got four right on my row where I am. I'm thinking, that, can I borrow your sign for another place? <laughs> yeah. uh, advertising, radio and TV, large volume, I think, and again, this is my personal opinion and other opinions that I've gotten from other people, but not experts per se. Advertising by TV and radio on large scale, I think, has a value if you can continue to hit them with stuff because you get them in front of them. Some of the videos they're doing on the TV are quite effective, I think. Uh, same thing with radio, but if you can only afford one or two commercial radio TVs, I'm not sure how much impact, but again, you've got to probably, if the other guys, the guys and gals are doing, you have to do it, but to me, uh, if I'm going to choose my money, I'm gonna, I'd am going to. i rather pay people to go door to door personally. Boots on the ground. It's scary knocking on doors of people you don't know. Anyone feel that way? But knocking on doors, you don't, people you don't know. Uh, I got started in this maybe four or five years ago. I don't, Ashton, I'm not even going to talk about Ashton. No, Ashton is the one that got me involved in this. 
And, uh, and I had never gone door to door in my life, and I ended up being precinct chair, and all of a sudden I had to get people together and go door to door. And I'm trying to train people going door to door, and we're all afraid to go door to door. <clears throat> but, you know, what's amazing to me is that if you're going door to door to Republicans, or door to door to Democrats, it'd be the same. If you're a Democrat, it's just they're friendly. The people are friendly. If you go and talk to them, we'll talk about that. So, uh, when you're doing door to door, you're going to have people doing data. And the people that do data, particularly in a, in a primary, be per, primarily the person that's in charge of the, of the organization for the candidate. In our, in my precinct, when we do it in the fall, I would do it for my precinct, trying to get people organized. Uh, and what you do is you probably the walking list and maps, and that takes more time than you might imagine if you've never done it. And calling lists, and again, that takes a bit of time to find calling lists and get them in place. And and, and Bob Brewer knows that. And, and a lot of us know that because we've been doing it. And the technology is getting better to make it easier to do the maps and the, the listing. And then the process that we use, I'm into canvassing as you can imagine. The process we use is we have one driver for two walkers. And the reason for that is effective and efficient. Uh, if you have a, if I have, when we go out, like I'm going out this Saturday and we went out last weekend and we have a, a driver that just takes all the stuff, takes the signs with them, they take all the paperwork with them, all you have to do is run back and forth to the doors, uh, go four or five doors, come back and more paperwork. Very efficient. You never want to go in singles, you want to always go in pairs, and but three, three people is, is a perfect thing. Some of our drivers slip off and do the walking that other people drive, so it's not all one thing. Anyway, the material that we typically give when I'm talking about what I do, and, and like most of them do, we give them a handout provided by the candidate, so the candidate has material they want you to deliver to the door. You get a copy, we like to take a copy of the ballot. We take a copy of the full ballot and give it to every person we knock on the door. Not everyone does that, but our group does. And the reason being, I, I know this from my own group. And I live in Emerald Bay, I didn't tell you that, but I live in Emerald Bay and we have 1,000, 1,100 people there and 850 voters, I think approximately, and 500 homes. When I went to dinner last night there, and I have this when I was at a party the week before, they're all saying, who should we vote for? What should we, what, how, what's on the ballot? Now they can look this up if they figure out how to do that, but it's easier to come to me. When you show them the size of the ballot, say, oh, I, can you mark it up and give it to me so I can take it in? And I said, well, uh, yeah, I can do that if you want to copy them, I mean, you know. But I mean, that, that's a huge difference when they see that ballot. It, it helps them when they have that in their hand. And what I do now, I'm in the process, once, once we finish picking all the people that we think should be picked, uh, I'm going to mark up the ballots and I'm going to make a copy and I'm going to send it to everybody on my distribution in, in, in 75. Well, I'll actually send it everywhere. Within, i got to be careful because they're different in different precincts. Uh, so that's, that's an important thing. Uh, voting information, we get them on the same sheet. There's enough space when I take the thing and double side the, the thing. There's enough space on the side that I can put down all the voting of dates, time, location for both early and both early, uh, uh, March 4th voting. So that's all on that one piece of paper. Full size. Uh, and then the summer sheet to record information the candidate wants. And what we gather, again, I, I, I'm not sure what the candidate wants, but I knew what I wanted. I wanted to know, are they home or not? That's a yes or no, and everyone wants to know that. Uh, are they going to vote? Are they, are they going to say they're going to vote? If they say yes, I put that down. Now I'm, now I'm going to hold them to that, because if they haven't voted by early voting, we'll call them and say, you know, I may drop in on them. And then we ask the person that's doing it, were they friendly? If they're friendly, it makes a difference on how you go, how you approach them the next time. And then we ask them if they could put a sign on the on the lawn. And if they're friendly, they'll ask them. If they're not friendly, they won't. But 95% of the people we talk to are friendly. They just may not want a sign. So those are all the things that we try and do. And then of course. Uh, you need, what we do, we, we tape it on the window, never on doors, I mean, we tape our, our note or stuff on it, depending on what it is. If, if the candy gives you something that you can attach it differently, we do it differently, but when we go, we usually put uh, uh, non-sticking, well, that's non, non-marking tape. Uh, we take a clip bag forward because it's easier to write on, and we take a you know, carry bag and material and, and water, and we keep that in the vehicle. When the canvas, everyone has their own opinion on this. Daylight hours, never in dark, I think it's pretty safe to say that. I don't think anyone wants you knocking on the door at night. Uh, uh, during the week, we do two hours before dark, mainly because people